So after I released the uh, video on uh, how to build a uh, circular polarised waveguide cantenna if you like for the 2.4 gigahertz um, I've had a few people ask me if I could make one for the uh, 5.8 gigahertz to use with FPV now of course the uh, major difference with the uh, 5.8 gigahertz is just that uh, everything's a lot smaller and uh, the cannon I'm going to use for the uh, 5.8 is this uh, Pilchard's can that uh, I picked up from my local supermarket the uh, diameter across here is actually uh, 53 millimeters and the length is 85 millimeters so if you have a look around your supermarket um, you could probably find these these are a, a well-known brand actually and it's sold all around the world but um, also tins of tomato puree are in a uh, can that's very similar to this a little bit shorter but uh, it's still got a diameter around that uh, 50 millimeters mark which you actually want to look for now when you find a tin that's uh, around that 50 millimeters diameter you also want to look at the length and this one's 85 millimeters and I wouldn't go any longer than this because uh, the beam width just becomes more and more and narrow so uh, it's very difficult to use at a short distance believe it or not but works perfectly fine at a uh, longer distance so try and find something that's around that 80 millimeters even going down to something like 65 millimeters and of course we're going to be using a cloverleaf antenna again it's tried and tested to uh, give us that uh, circular polarization in our waveguide so the actual method is uh, the same as in the 2.4 gigahertz video just obviously different measurements for the different frequency and we're going to be mounting it exactly the same way that we did for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz so let's crack on then let's get the tools out and i'll show you how to make one of these antennas so first of all I'm going to make the cloverleaf antenna for this and I'm going to need a four arm cloverleaf with four elements to it rather than the three and uh, I'm going to get the copper wire that I'm going to use out of this uh, earth cable here it's got uh, multi strands inside and the thickness of the copper wire inside is around 22 SWG so it's quite a fine wire but because it's actually going to be contained in a can it's going to be protected and this is what it actually looks like when you strip it back you've got uh, quite a few lengths of copper wire there so if you purchase a meter of this you're going to have enough there to make uh, plenty of antennas now at one full wavelength at 5.8 millimeters the length is 51.7 millimeters long so I'm going to measure off four lengths at uh, 51.7 millimeters and to help me I'm not going to measure off measuring each one with a ruler because uh, as I've said previously in other videos it's a lot easier if you get yourself a straw this is uh, a little bit thicker than a normal straw it's uh, some plastic tubing that I've got and if you measure that off at the length you need and just trim it off with uh, a sharp knife then what you can do with this is use it to actually measure off multiple lengths if you hold it down on a flat surface like that and get some side cutters just hold them flat to the top of the tube and then snip and you've got a length that's exactly 51.7 millimeters and you don't have to go measuring each one individually so once you've got the uh, four lengths of copper measured out to a full wavelength the next measurement we're going to actually need to do with this is a quarter wavelength and if you divide that by four a quarter wavelength comes out at 12.9 millimeters so again so I'm not measuring such a small measurement each time on the ruler I've uh, got a little bit of uh, plastic tubing again and this is measured off at 12.9 millimeters and I can use that to measure all my quarter wavelengths because it's going to be a half wavelength in the middle and a quarter wavelength at the side here and a quarter wavelength at the side there so I've got my measuring tube and I've got my needle nose pliers they've got a nice flat surface on these so I place the first one into the tube there and then I butt my um, needle nose pliers up to the end of the tube and I can release and that then there that length is exactly 12.9 millimeters and that's a quarter wavelength so I'll just put a small bend in there not a right angle bend just a bend like that for now and do the same on the other side so 
so make sure that I bend in the same direction and again a small bend to match the other side. So we're going to start putting a uh, curve into the half wavelength of the element here in the middle and uh, what you actually need you need to find yourself a piece of tubing around 10 millimeters 12 millimeters to 10 millimeters no smaller than 10 millimeters really and no greater than about 12 millimeters this is a uh, old rubber duck dipole antenna that just happens to be exactly 11 millimeters on its outside diameter so if you get your element and hold it roughly at the center there and just carefully bend it round using your thumbs to manipulate that curve nice and slowly get it nice and straight and even So you've got a nice curve going all the way around it and you can also lay it down flat on a flat bench like this and just give it a bit of a roll just to make sure you've got that curve nice and even all the way around and of course because we're using such thin wire it does make it a little bit easier to do. So I'm going to be using this semi-rigid coax and I've prepared it ready to solder on my elements by getting a cutting wheel on my Dremel and cutting down evenly around the side of the coax there four slits and uh, they're actually five millimeters deep and uh, I'm going to pull those out like um, pulling the uh, petals of a flower out and what that will enable me to do is create little solder cups along here so I can actually go ahead and solder the one of my legs of the um, driven element onto and then the uh, second leg here I'll uh, expose some of the inner core and solder directly onto the inner core just by doing this it helps support your elements until you've got them all soldered in place and it's uh, just much easier to actually do it this way so the four parts of the braid now I've actually uh, trimmed away uh, the excess that I don't need and I've uh, tinned up these uh, little solder cups that I'm going to use now and I've also put a little bit of tin on that inner braid and trimmed away some of that dielectric there so there is about a uh, three millimeter uh, piece of dielectric there separating from the outer braid to that inner core so the gap between each of the elements is going to be around three millimeters which it doesn't want to be any more than that and to make life easier as well I've also pre-tinned each of the legs up on the elements as well just so we can just get in there with the heat of the soldering iron to actually melt the solder and not having to add too much solder in there to get a good joint. Now this clover leaf that I'm building now is going to be left hand polarised and I don't know why but I think it's because I'm right handed I find it much easier to actually make a left hand polarised antenna but uh, that's something to note if you make this left or right handed then uh, your transmitting antenna also needs to be the same um, polarization as your receiving antenna if you've got a mismatch in there then uh, it will won't work anywhere near as well as what it should do so just make sure if you make a uh, left hand turn transmitting antenna that you make a left hand turn receiving antenna as well now to make this left hand turn you want to get your leg and you've got your right hand side here and your left hand side here and uh, if you put your left hand leg and uh, treat that as your bottom one so you solder that in there first and you do that with all your other elements then you will have a perfect left hand turn again if you want a right hand turn you take the right hand side of your element here and start in soldering that one in first so that one's going to be your bottom leg and uh, carry on the same way around there and that's it really as long as you actually follow exactly each element the way you actually start so I'm going to use my left hand leg and do the same with all the others then you won't go wrong so to actually solder this in place what I've got is some tweezers to actually hold the element because uh, if you hold it with your fingers it doesn't take long for the heat to travel up that uh, copper wire and uh, you'll end up dropping it before the uh, solder has had chance to uh, actually melt so hold the uh, bottom leg in place first soldering iron has just got a little bit of tin on it and I'm just going to go in there and a little bit of heat 
and get that solar flow in. And the first one is actually in place. So I'm coming in under the first one. Now as for the uh, top legs, I'm going to solder all those in place in one go. And what I've done, I've just gone around and manipulated each leg just into place, just touching that uh, centre core there so it's just sat in place by itself. And what I'm going to do now is go in with the soldering iron and just solder it all in one go. So I've got those top legs all soldered onto that uh, centre connector and as you can see I've got my dielectric in between there about three millimetres so it's separating the uh, top legs from the bottom legs and I've got that clover leaf shape going on there so you can also just gently tease each one of these elements out just so you get them all nice and uniform and looking like a propeller. So I've drilled a 5mm hole in the centre of the base of the uh, can and uh, what I'm going to do is pass this coax through but I'm going to put some uh, heat shrink tubing on here because I want it to completely be isolated from this can. So this can is just going to be a waveguide and it's a uh, passive waveguide. It's not going to be connected to the uh, cloverleaf antenna at all. You know, unlike the... Uh, Cantenna where the actual outer is uh, grounded down onto the uh, coax itself but uh, this antenna is completely passive from the uh, waveguide itself so it's in no way connected so a little bit of heat shrink tubing around here will do a good job of isolating it now I also want the uh, clover leaf to be exactly six millimeters away from the uh, base of the can so I've got uh, a round piece of cork here and I've drilled a hole through the centre that's exactly six millimetres thick and I'm going to epoxy that in place onto the uh, clover leaf like so and then when that's dry I'm going to put some epoxy on the other side and then I'm going to feed it through the can so it'll be uh, stuck at the base of the can there on the bottom and it'll be exactly six millimetres away from that bottom uh, reflector. So I've epoxied the uh, cork base to the uh, bottom of the clove leaf as you can see and I've also worked some epoxy putty in between the uh, joints of the elements just to uh, add a little bit more strength to it as well. Now to add a little bit more strength to uh, the actual element not just the epoxy holding it in place to the back reflector what I've done here I've put a little bit of epoxy around uh, here on the heat shrink tubing and I've got uh, one of these little rivets these are, are used in uh, leather goods and uh, thick cotton to make uh, curtains and eyelets and that sort of thing and I'm just going to force it's just a little bit narrower than the heat shrink tubing but I can use my needle nose pliers to actually push it down and uh, push it down on top of this uh, epoxy here and that'll just hold it in place like a uh, big rivet so if uh, a little bit of force does get put onto the uh, coax from this side it's not going to force it off and push the old element away from that back reflector and end up breaking the antenna itself. Now to actually close this end of the waveguide off and uh, ultimately protect the element inside I've got some cork matting here, it's about 2mm thick and I'm just going to epoxy that onto the can itself and then get a sharp knife and uh, cut round it using the uh, can as a uh, sort of jig or guide and uh, a little bit of sandpaper and then we'll uh, paint that when we actually paint the uh, outside of the can itself. So here is the uh, finished antenna with the paint on there and I've also done a uh, finishing touch with this as well. I've put some uh, 
vinyl tape around here and I've done it in the uh, direction of the polarization of the antenna so if you uh, make a couple of these and you make one in the left hand and you make one in the right hand if you put this tape on you're not going to get that polarization mixed up and uh, have a mismatch with your uh, transmitting antenna so it's also a good way to actually note which way the polarization is going and it was actually uh, my daughter recently she uh, happened to mention that uh, a lot of my antennas are either black or they are uh, white and she says that's uh, kind of boring she told me to start using some uh, brighter colors like light blues light greens and light yellows and uh, it was only afterwards when she uh, left that i realized what she was actually talking about so i think this is what she actually had in mind but uh, i don't think i'm going to be making any of these anytime soon but i do like the bi-quad goggles so I hope you enjoyed that video and any comments, questions, uh, drop them below and please uh, give it a thumbs up on YouTube and I will be putting a few of these in my shop but I'm also sending a couple out to uh, other people for testing and uh, hopefully we'll get some feedback on how these actually perform in the field. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I hope you join me for the next one.